Hello, everybody. Welcome to Chin Fat. Uh, in this episode, I'm continuing talking about the four windows that we were working within that are the standard windows that you work within Premiere Pro. Quick refresher on these things to select different windows. The first of these four, I talked about uh, the project window that you get there by hitting Shift 1. And then it highlights that window. That's your project window. Shift 2 takes you to the source monitor. Shift 3 takes you to the sequence or the timeline. And Shift 4 takes you to the program. So I'm going to go Shift 3. In this episode, we are talking about the sequence or timeline. Uh, essentially, this here is called a timeline. But when you start editing, putting files into it, it creates a sequence of edits. That's why they call it a sequence as well. So if they're talking about a timeline or a sequence, it's essentially the same thing. But uh, technically, this is your timeline down here. Here, and then the sequence is your sequence of clips that you're editing inside of your timeline there. So some features that we've got here in the timeline. Uh, first of all, the thing that I've covered on all these is pulling down the menu right here, and you have some options in your menu here. The little three-dash item here will pull up that menu, as it will in any one of your tabs. And you always have the option to close the panel, and you got to be careful not to close your panel unless you're intending to do it, because uh, you can open several timelines or several sequences uh, up at once, and it does it by, uh, via tabs. In fact, I'm going to go over to my search engine here, type in sequence, and it will bring up my sequences here. And now I can open up several sequences. Right now I'm in the scene 01 edit, but if I double click on another one, it opens up another tab. If I go to another one, it opens up another tab. I can have several tabs here open in the same area down here. And you can simply click on those. And actually, if you hit Shift 3, it will toggle through all those that you have open, all those tabs that you have open. Now, if you want to close a panel, you can click on this and say close panel. Another way of doing that, the shortcut is Command W or Control W on a PC. Command W will close a uh, timeline window. And if you clo accidentally close one more and you have none, you're like, oh crap, where'd my timeline go? Or I can go over to, back to my project window here. I'm gonna hit X to clear that out. I'll move over this and hit tilde. The tilde is above the tab key under the escape key, which makes this window go full screen. And now I can go to that same same uh, file that I had open right here. That, uh, that's a sequence right there. And I double click on it and it restores it. So once again, if that's closed, all you have to do is go to your project window, find that same uh, sequence. If you can't find it and you can't remember where you put it, you can go to your search window and type in sequence and it will just bring up sequences. Right now it's got folders in here because it's but there are no sequences in folders because nothing's showing in these folders here. Uh, but right here are all my sequences. I can just double click on that and now I can clear that out and I've restored my sequence. Some other items in this little menu drop down here. There are several settings in here. I'm not going to go through all these. I'm going to go through the ones that are a little bit more commonly used. Is uh, down here showing thumbnails on your timeline here. In fact, I'm going to zoom up a little bit. I'm going to go to my timeline. I'm going to hit at the top of my keyboard plus 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 and zoom up on this a little bit. You can also do that down here. You can expand and zoom in and out right there. But you'll notice you got a thumbnail for your entire timeline or, or you've got a thumbnail right here at the beginning of your timeline. And every at the beginning of every clip you'll have uh, a thumbnail here. If you're not seeing those, one of two things. First of all, your track height might not be high enough. If you do shift minus in your timeline, it takes it down to a really small track size. If you do shift plus, and I'm hitting plus and minus on the top of the keyboard, not on the numpad, shift plus will take it up to a standard track height. And then you can see the thumbnails. So if you can't see those, hit shift plus. And then if you're still not seeing them, you can go up to this menu here, and this might not be checkmarked right here. Uh, you've got the options of uh, video head thumbnails, video and tail th uh, thumbnails. So that will show, uh, we'll split it into two thumbnails here. Basically, let's go to this longer one right there. The beginning, it shows kind of a beginning frame. In fact, I'm going to move over this gray area right here. I'm going to hold down Option or Alt and scroll up with my mouse. And that's going to make your track height even taller here. And then I can hit plus to kind of zoom up on it a little bit more. And let's look at this one right here. So you have the beginning thumbnail and then you have the ending thumbnail right there. And this is a preference thing. I kind of like it just with the just with the video head thumbnails on. But you also have the option here of going uh, continuous video thumbnails. And then it'll have a bunch of individual frames as you zoom up on this. It'll have a bunch. Uh, this is kind of confusing because then it makes it look like you got a bunch of cuts, which looks a little bit weird. Uh, but that's an actual cut right there. See, and this kind of looks like a cut, but it actually isn't. It's got these individual frames progressing through the file that kind of represent this region and this region, what it looks like in those regions. I just personally like it on video head thumbnails. And those are some of the more important things in there. Let's 